Okay, so the M1 MacBook Pros. You've probably heard how fast and performant these machines are. In this video, I want to share some build and install times across 16 open source projects using various frameworks or languages such as Node.js, Xcode Swift, and C-sharp.net, and how they differ on the M1 MacBook Pro compared to a 2018 Intel i7 MacBook Pro. And just a quick apology in advance, if I haven't covered your preferred language in this video, I do apologize, but hopefully, at the very least, by the end of the video, it will give you an indication of how fast the M1s are, because there are some consistent results across the various languages or frameworks, which you'll see in a moment. So just to set the scene, we have a M1 14-inch and 16-inch base models. The 16-inch does come with additional two CPU and two GPU cores, that's the only difference, both running on 16 gigs of RAM, and I'll be competing against my 2018 i7 MacBook Pro, which also has 16 gigs of RAM, which I've been using for software development for the past God knows how many years. Uh, I've given it a new home now as I've sold it on eBay. Okay, so the first set of results I want to share with you are some Node Package Manager install times. Now I grabbed a few open source projects which I can find on GitHub and you'll see them along the Y or vertical axes. And along the X axis uh, is time in seconds to show how long it took to build, sorry, install some of these packages. You can see with take notes, it took significantly shorter with the M1s, which you can see in the uh, blue shades of color compared to the Intel, which is in the reddish pinkish color. You may also notice that there are some projects, uh, express.js and socket.io, where the M1s took uh, longer to install. My only guess is um, internet blip uh, from my side, or it just took longer to install the packages uh, based on NPM, maybe. So I ran the test a few more times to get some averages, and these are the results of the second time run where I ran it a few more times. You can see a bit more consistent results. Generally, the M1s are much quicker, almost two to three times as fast as the Intel. Next up, I wanted to give Xcode uh, or Swift um, a try, and these are measuring build times very across the various open source projects. And here you can see the M1s are much quicker compared to the Intel, again, twice, almost three times as fast with the first build time. And then I ran the test again, this time making a small code change to sort of um, simulate a develop and build cycle. And these are the results of the averages that I recorded. Here again, you can see much, much quicker, especially with the Firefox focus app. That's 3.6 seconds in build compared to 30 seconds with the Intel. Time saved for sure. And the final thing I want to share with you are some .NET C Sharp build compile times. And here again, you can see the M1s are generally much quicker than the Intel. Um, for example, there is some oddities with the Poly project, which you saw earlier with the Node Package Manager install times. For some reason, the MacBook Pro 16 inch took much longer than the Intel and the 14 inch. Again, my only guess is internet fluctuations to pull uh, some of the packages and maybe just build them. So I ran the tests a few more times to get some averages and these are the results. Again, much quicker on both the M1s. One last thing I wanna cover very quickly is software compatibility issues with these new M1 Macs. There may be occasions that you may come across when you're installing packages, you get an error, something like ARM architecture not supported or something like that. It's not the end of the world, it just means that that particular software has been upgraded to support or run on the new ARM architecture. There are workarounds like running it on Rosetta mode, other times you may just have to wait or find an alternative. But now the M1 Max were released in 2020. A lot of people and companies have had time to catch up and release specific ARM versions. So we're in a much better position now compared to way back in 2020. There are two websites which I found very handy. One is called Is Apple Silicon Ready? And the other one is Does It Arm? I'll add links in the description below. There's a whole list of software and applications that tell you whether a particular software or app is Apple Silicon compatible already. 
Hopefully you found this video useful somewhat. My name is Chen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I have no idea why I do that. It's, I think it's my way of just signing off. I'll see you later. Ciao for now.